Whee! It's nippy out. Um, like 57 degrees, no, 50, 52 degrees right now in Redmond, Washington, which is located about 12, 12 to 15 miles to Seattle. Um, depending on, you know, how you go or how the crow flies, as some may say. Anyway, uh, I just got home from riding around, running some errands, catching a donut, doing some other things on my Rice and Mueller Load 75. And I've seen questions pop up a bunch of times about would I recommend it? Blah, 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 et cetera, et cetera. And the summary statement is, hell yeah, hell yeah. If you've got the money and if you do ride regularly, especially in like urban environments or on trails, like fairly rough trails with hills, it is a, it is a very, very good investment. Um, this one in particular, I'm going to cover real quick the things I have enjoyed and dealt with in the past year plus of ownership and several thousands and thousands of miles. So here we go. First off, as you can see, I got it with these add-ons, the cover, the short sides, the tray inside, and the, uh, the, the tub underneath right here, right? That goes underneath. The footwell, I guess you could call it. Uh, that's where my son puts his feet when we go riding around and he puts all his other stuff on the tray, etc. Now, I also recently, amidst all that, got a trailer hitch, and this is the trailer that I got to ride with it. It has a flag, etc. that's what's sticking up. Anyway, I put this in here because he doesn't use this thing anymore, and I need to go put it in storage, so I'm gonna haul it down to the storage bin. However, I didn't do that today because I forgot. Beyond that specifically, I got the belt drive, with the Bosch dual battery, as you can see. And this display, which is, I don't think available anymore. I think it's just a 2022 or 2023 availability and that's it. If you're wondering what this is, goes to a helmet. I have blinkers on my helmet when I do wear my helmet. Um, and then I added this little bit and some other things. This is for one of my cameras, etc. But this is the basic setup and it is an Inviolo or whatever you call this. Now I, am used to switching with something like this because because I also have a Brompton and you have to switch it very similarly even though it's geared and not CVT like continuous variable like the Inviolo. So fortunately I was kind of prepared to be proficient at this type of gearing or lack thereof uh, whenever I got the bike. I know a lot of people have trouble with this and I can see why like you don't shift it. You definitely do not shift it when you're moving. You need to backpedal, do a little quick twitch or whatever to go into a shifting position. And it's a variable rate shifter. It's not like you're in a gear, which is always super weird. Okay, so enough of that, though. I know people have problems with it. I don't have problems with it. But if you are looking at getting this bike, I would suggest getting one, the roll off or, or even the chain drive, you know, with something like that. It's just it's a little easier to maintain in your head if you're familiar with riding other traditional geared bikes. Now the other thing on these bikes is the brakes. This rear brake, which I've changed the brake pads to a number of times, is part of this brake system, which you can see has a top reservoir up here with these, these two screws with the weird hex uh, wrench that holds them in place. Uh, these, these brakes are great. Don't get me wrong, they're great. However, I did have a mishap with one. Uh, the upper reservoir of the rear brake leaked, completely lost pressure, and got covered under warranty. I got a new uh, rear brake uh, handle because you have to replace like the whole handle to get the reservoir replaced. Now what bugs me, you see right here under this thing, there is a message too that says basically don't open this, uh, blah, 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 and Inside of here is where there's a little rubber, uh, basically like it has a, a kind of a nipple. Do you even call it that? I don't know what you call it these days. But anyway, it has the little rubber uh, gommet that, that keeps it from leaking, right? But it's very flimsy. So if you overpressure and it's for any reason not braced in here and held by these two screws efficiently, it's gonna leak, it's gonna leak everywhere. So that was a huge issue. 
Now, one of the other things, and if you've seen any of my other previous videos, you uh, you know that I ride a lot of hills because I'm in Redmond and I go into Seattle all the time. And going into Seattle is, one could argue, at least four major hills, right? And th with a bike like this, it's excellent because I get four downhills too before I even get to the bridge over Lake Washington. It's like a two mile or 1.8 mile bridge, something like that, or three kilometers, whatever. Uh, it's a pretty long bridge and great. The great thing is, is it has a relatively flat piece across most of it, but it also has a hump in the middle where you have to cross. And this bike makes these hills and all of this easy peasy. Like driving during rush hour, it's about an hour, five, hour, 15 minutes a lot of the time for people that commute into the city. For me riding this bike, it is 45 minutes to one hour and 15 minutes depending on where I need to go within the city of Seattle. Like I can get to the downtown core in about an hour and five flat. I can get to the waterfront an hour 15. I can get to Capitol Hill in an hour and 15. New District in about 50 minutes. So those are the major places you need to go in Seattle. And I can get to all of them in basically the same amount of time that it takes someone to drive during rush hour. So if I ever do have to commute, it works pretty well. Even as is, uh, it still takes 35 minutes, 40 minutes to get downtown driving as it does to ride this bike over the bridge and get into the city. So on the last maintenance too, I did also get these uh, parts replaced. Um, as you can see though, with the new modern fork that they have as of 2023 or 2022, whenever I got this, uh, the, these don't rust. I've heard some of the past ones rust, but I've had zero problem. And as you can see, it's dirty. Uh, it rains a lot in Seattle, like 110 days a year or so. And I have had no problem with any of this assembly. Uh, and that includes even with some of the brushes I have had with hard objects. As you can see on the footwell, I have actually punctured this corner. Uh, there's a small hole in there, but that's not a big deal, really. No one even notices, including my son whenever he rides in it. And over here, you can see a little bit of the scraping of the bar, the steering bar. Right here is where the impact was. Um, I've hit various things with the steering bar a number of times, and it's, I still have a perfectly true alignment in steering. The bar is perfectly straight. I've had no defections or bends or anything with the bar. It's held real good. The bolt clamps, et cetera, that hold it to the steering assembly, perfectly fine. So even with minor incidents like that and some torquing of the bar, it holds up just fine. After rolling these up and putting them into these assemblies here, you know, like they go around it and hold it in place with the Velcro underneath. Uh, I often have my passenger here with me and the sides rolled up because he likes to get that fresh breeze when we do have some of our, you know, warmer days. And those days are excellent. I roll the sides up. I don't even take the top off. Uh, I don't really feel like there's much necessity to do that, especially when I have a little trailer. Uh, everything I do need to haul, I just haul in here, haul groceries, etc., and it's it's fine. I have I've been up to the weight limit a number of times. Um, no issues, no issues. I could easily exceed the weight limit. Not that I would recommend it because it does, you know, it gets pretty unwieldy at a certain point, especially if you need to do some hill climbs or if you need some twisty S turns or something. Uh, so you know, it, it it can get a little sketchy. But that's just the physics of being on a bicycle when you're trying to carry you know, a hundred freaking kilograms or some crazy amount of weight. Uh, it gets, it gets tough, you know, no matter how much assist you have. Same thing as if you're in a car and you're carrying a measly hundred kilograms, it gets unwieldy too. But anyway, that's the summary of the bike in its current, uh, mission that I have it in. So basically kid hauling, grocery getting, hauling guitar equipment, amps, you know, 90, 100, 100 pound, that's like 40, 50 kilograms of amps, uh, guitar bits, etc. I carry, I've carried tons of uh, uh, comic books, um, vinyls. I've gone on several vinyl missions. See those postings. Uh, those were a lot of fun. And it's, it's held up great. This, this bike is absolutely wonderful. Um, however, if you're still trying to own a bunch of cars, you're on, let's say, a slightly better than median income salary because you kind of have to be to buy one of these in the United States. Uh, you know, I, I would definitely draw a question mark of whether you want to spend that kind of money. You could do various other things. However, if you're going to replace a car, 
this is a 100% win. You're going to win. I don't care even if you buy a used car for like 15, 20 grand. Um, if you're just running your the basic daily errands and missions and stuff like that with this bike, it's going to end up being better than a car. It's going to be more useful. You, you can just park anywhere. You can do whatever. Even in most of the suburbs in the U.S., this will easily be better than like, you know, a Honda Civic or something like that. You know, no gas. The charge is quick. Uh, even if you're out of charge, if you're in flat territory like Florida or something, you just pedal. <laughs> right so it downgrades pretty seamlessly um however if you're not on upper median income salary i wouldn't buy one of these on a median income salary i'd try to keep something simpler going uh because it's tough it's it's tough to foot the bill of a 14 to sixteen thousand dollar cargo bike however it is absolutely worth it it is absolutely worth it if that amount of money is not going to hit you in the face too hard um but even as is, I would say, like, I've spent that money and I've saved vastly more by simply just not owning a car. Uh, every, every year that I did own a car, which has been 14 years plus, even way back then when cars were way cheaper, um, I was still spending, you know, 15 or 20 grand every single year on the car. And that didn't even include some of the, the add-ons and other stuff that I had to deal with. And 99% of my trips, all mile or two, three, four miles. And I do all that now with this bike. So it's a thing to think about, but I, I highly recommend it as long as it's not going to hit you in the purse too hard. Uh, otherwise, I'd take a look at some of the other uh, less expensive bikes, you know, even even some of the bullets, which are still expensive, you know, four, five, six, seven grand. Those bikes are absolutely worth it because you're talking more than half the price of this one. Uh, you don't have full suspension. You might not have as much gearing options, etc. but you're going to get the same amount of functionality. You're just going to have to work a tiny bit harder and your ride might be bumpy. So, <laughs> you know, pretty standard stuff for a bike. Anyway, highly recommended, you know, with the caveat that, you know, there it's, it's pretty pricey and you should keep it up too. You should go in and get regular, you know, hundred to three hundred dollar checkups every six months and get it tuned make sure everything the, ba the batteries are okay make sure all the the gearing the the belt or whatever you have is 100 percent, etc because that will prevent you from ending up with uh you know a more severe issue that might crop up you know same thing like as if you were trying to you know, maintain a car you need to bring it in every you know every every year or so D depending on your mileage to make sure you get an oil change make sure you're checking the brakes etc blah 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 so same 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 situation there anyway with that uh, have fun, and I hope with your new Load 75 or whatever R&M bike, you're kicking ass, taking some names, and having fun. Cheerio.